Joining us from Washington, D.C., Juan Zarate, CBS News Senior National Security Analyst. Juan, good morning to you. Good morning, Terrell. Now, much of this still developing. I want to read, though, what the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers said. The attack was a planned, coordinated, well-executed military-style event. Based on the information that you know, do you agree with that assessment? Well, I think it's clear that you had a, a real assault on the consulate. This was uh, an attack by 20 militants, well-armed. Uh, it appears to be well-planned out. Uh, and so we just have to see where, what the evidence tells us. But certainly this was more than just a protest gone bad. But whether or not it was a premeditated al-Qaeda attack, I think, is uh, still to be determined. There is that assertion that's already out there. It's been mentioned that this could be a possible al-Qaeda-style attack. It could have been al-Qaeda or another terrorist group. Is it too soon to say that right now? Well, I don't think it's too soon to say that you have elements in the eastern part of Libya, in particular in Benghazi, that are anti-American, that subscribe to the al-Qaeda ideology, uh, an umbrella group that calls for the implementation of Sharia and that has been against the Libyan uh, elections and democracy. And so the, no doubt there are elements in eastern Libya that look, smell, and taste like al-Qaeda and certainly may have been behind uh, this attack. And so I think that's the safe presumption, and I think that's what people are looking at right now. There are many Americans that are asking, how could this happen? Who is responsible for the security of ambassadors and embassy employees in foreign countries, especially in a hot spot like Libya? Well, the State Department uh, has responsibility for securing its uh, embassies and its personnel abroad. Uh, the diplomatic security branch of uh, the State Department has that responsibility, guarding our embassies around the world, including in hot spots like Iraq and Afghanistan and in uh, places like Libya. It's supplemented by Marine Guards, uh, often helped by private contractors, especially in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. And so there's a security apparatus built around securing our uh, most sensitive and vulnerable sites around the world. It's been a very long time since there's been an attack like this. Does this set a new paradigm? for how embassies are protected, U.S. embassies are protected around the globe? Well, U.S. embassies have always been iconic targets for terrorists and people who hate the United States. Uh, Al-Qaeda has always targeted them. Recall in 1998 the twin bombings in East Africa of our embassies. Uh, the last time, though, that we've had an ambassador killed was in 1979 in Afghanistan. And so uh, we've gone for 30 years uh, or so where an American ambassador uh, has not been killed. And so this, this is a really uh, not just tragic event, but symbolically important one where American power and the symbol of its uh, presence abroad, the U.S. ambassador, has been directly attacked. The FBI sending agents to Libya to investigate. There are also two destroyers that are positioning themselves off the coast of Libya. What's developing here? What happens next? I think what you see is the administration and the U.S. military and parts of the government trying to deal not just with the aftermath of these attacks, but also to deal with potential contingencies. It's not clear if this could start a wave of protests around the world. Keep in mind we have Friday prayers coming up uh, throughout Muslim-majority capitals. That often is a time of protests. It often is a time where emotions are stirred up. And so you could see follow-on uh, demonstrations not just in Libya, not just in Egypt, but perhaps throughout the region. And having destroyers in place, having more Marines, more FBI agents in place uh, is an important part of preparing for that, uh, that contingency. And even as of last night, there were protests and riots that were taking place outside of the American embassy in Cairo. You just mentioned that. Is this part of a larger wave of something that we're going to see maybe spread across the Middle East? Well, it's part of a pattern we've seen over the past few years where uh, incidents that have uh, been seen as insults to Islam have really triggered a widespread reaction and largely reactions against those who are blamed for the, uh, the insult. And so recall the Danish cartoon controversy where, where Danish embassies were attacked around uh, the Middle East. Uh, you've had the, the alleged Quran burnings, uh, Stoke killings in places like Afghanistan and elsewhere. And so I think it's part of a pattern that we've seen, but I think it's a dangerous one, especially in the wake of the Arab revolutions, where uh, there may not be as much law and order or security as we've seen in the past. It's been almost a year since Gaddafi was killed, and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said, of course, many are wondering how this could happen in a country that we helped to liberate. Give us an idea of what Libya is like right now post-revolution. Well, you have a country that's uh, trying to go through a democratic transition. They had a successful election. 
an election actually uh, where the moderates won, uh, surprisingly. Uh, most people had assumed that the Islamists, the Muslim Brotherhood, would win. They didn't. Uh, but it's a country that's struggling uh, with its security, uh, with a number of tribes, a number of factions that are still vying for power, and certainly a fringe uh, uh, element, a very extreme violent element uh, that poses a risk. And I think one of the challenges, not just in Libya, but around the region is, what do you do with these groups that uh, look like al-Qaeda, subscribe to their ideology, and are virulently anti-American, regardless of the role that we play to liberate their country. And That's with, a major problem. And with that in mind, Juan, in the last few seconds that we have here, should this attack have been a surprise? Well, certainly we had 9-11 coming up. Uh, we, we knew that this film was out there, um, and uh, certainly we should have been aware that there was the potential of a threat. I don't know enough about the intelligence that we may have had about uh, a looming attack, uh, but this is the kind of thing that... Uh, our embassies uh, and consulates need to be prepared for, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the ambassador and the three others who lost their lives. Juan Zarati, CBS News Senior National Security Analyst. Juan, thank you so much. Thanks, Terrell.